Venice, the floating city, the city of water, or the city of canals. Venice is known by many names, the picturesque Gondola R.I. through the Venice waterways or the towering St. Frais Marks Basilica. There's always that desire to see the city at least once in your lifetime, so if you've never been before, let's take a look at beautiful places to visit in Venice No. 1, St. Mark's Basilica. Now this is the first place I reckon that you should head to, and by that far, the most epic church in Venice, the Roman Catholic Catholic Cathedral, is set in the heart of St. Marco Square, or Piao St. Marco and it's been an important meeting place for Venetian and for use tourists throughout. Time even Napoleon once referred to. St. Mark's Square as the drawing room of Europe, and most likely because of its wonderful tranquility as you sit and observe your surroundings, the architecture is impressive, and the marble staircase is filled with incredible detail. You'll notice the horses of St. Mark that crown the main entranceway, stolen by Napoleon but returned in 1815. So this is a great place to start. Your adventure in Chiso, Venice No. 2, D. Mar, music, with its pointed roof and its brick structure. A 10th century campan is so tall that it was the main mark for boat captains to find their way home. Now this is easily seen even from when you land in Venice, especially as you head to S. Mark Basilica. It was rebuilt after crumbling in the 1500s, and it now has, has an elevator to take you all up to the top. This is the most popular bell tower in Venice, so it's better to visit it early during the day, though it can be quite a sight at sunset as well. It offers superb views of the city, and if the weather is clear, you can see the Alps in the Tond distance. Number 3. Pat Dual. Now, one of the famous places to see in Venice, the Dodge's Palace, is an immensely beautiful and gorgeous palace that's located on the bank of the Grander Canal. During the early days, it was the seat of the governor, the Palace of Justice, and the official residence of DOI. Now you will notice the absolute finesse of the Venetian Gothic. Architecture. The decor just sets it a class apart and easily one of the best places to visit in Venice. So this is a great opportunity to get there early, roughly around the $14. And then you come to the Bridge of Size, which was built in the 17th century. So the purpose of this bridge was to connect the existing palace with the new prison to be built on the other side of the canal. And the name refers to the size that the convicts had who were on their way from the courtroom of the Pat Dual and as they watch their freedom literally disappear under their feet from the bridge for the last time number four Grand Canal. Now Venice has literally hundreds of canals that connect the various islands that make up the city and the largest of which is the Canal Grande, a monumental canal that's more like a river as it passes from one side of Venice to the other and snakes through the censor in a large sen shape over 170 buildings dating from as early as the 13th century. Li in the banks of the canal and is a very important waterway in the city for hundreds of years. And only four bridges span the Grand Canal. So as generally people and, you know, tourists, Al, like travel along the canal, not over it. Number five, San Giorgio, Maggior. So this is one of the most photographed basilicas in Venn. And from Marx's Square, you can see this wonderful small island with the church and the bell tower. So the bonus of visiting this small island is that it's less busy than the ever popular S. Marx Square. So you can visit yourself with public transport, but I recommend that you download the official app, ACTV or AVM Venia, and you can find the exact timetables of the water buses, the pedo wind, and the best route from your home. Hotel number six, Campo Santa Maria for Maumis Alf. Moi? Now this is one of the largest squares in Venice, and it is located in the Castello district. The square is bound by three canals, Santa Maria, Fossa, Pestrin, and Mond. No. But the most important building in the square is the Church of Santa Maria. And so, according to tradition, the church was built in 639 and then renovated just over 200 years later. And after that, it was damaged by a fire restored again in 1106. 
The church was then rebuilt in 1492 in more of a Renaissance style, so there are so many important facts and interesting stories in regards to this area, so make sure that you spend some time there. Number 7. The Rialto Bridge So it's one of Venice's most famous landmarks, a stunning arch bridge that spans the Grand Canal. It's not just a beautiful sight, but also a bustling marketplace where you can shop for souvenirs and enjoy the vibrant atmosphere of the city. But I would be lying if I said to enjoy the vibrant atmosphere of the city because it is packed like a can of sardines, but don't forget your camera for those picturesque views of Venice's iconic waterways. So it, it is super crowded in the summer. It is chalker block, jam-packed with so many people rubbing shoulders with strangers. Then this is the perfect attraction for you. To visit during the baking summer, next up is Arjar. Bano. Now, this is an island in the north of Venice, very near to Torello, and it's become one of the most visited islands for its colorful houses, and every so often, and it's compulsory, the neighbors paint the facades of their homes in the chosen color and are notified of the specific shade according to where the residence located. But a legend is told that the houses were painted bright and cheerful, colors so that sailors could see them on those gloomy and foggy days. But believe what you will, you only need around one or two hours to visit this island, since it's very small. But if you want to keep exploring the Venetian Lagoon and its islands, I highly suggest taking a Vaporetto to Cello once you have visited the island of Gao Burano No. 9, Murano. So now we come to the second island that you should visit to kind of get away from the main areas of Venice. And Murano is the second largest island in the Venetian Lagoon and it's world-renowned for its glass are, so it attracts millions upon millions of people every year to admire. It's glassmaking that has been going on for centuries, so it's a mix of seven islands linked by bridges and separated by eight canals, and as I mentioned, famous for its glass, making its glass, products, mirrors, and so forth. So if you've ever wanted to buy me a gift on your next holiday to Venice, then this island is the perfect place to head. Two, and finally, number 10, a gondola ride. Now, if there's one thing that you should save your money for, it's this enjoying a gondola ride in Venice, I would say is an absolute must drifting along the canals of a very romantic city. It's something that you should try at least once in your lifetime as your gondolier navigates the waterways. You'll be surrounded by wonderful architecture and the gentle sounds of the water against the ancient buildings. For me, it's, it's, it's the perfect way to savor the city's unique charm. So whether you're with someone or by yourself, the ambience that's truly why you would go on one of these, it's truly unforgettable. You see Venice's picturesque canals come to life in a way that only a gunda ride can offer. And there you have it, folks. Those were 10 top things to do in Venice, by the way. You can go to the Peggy Guggenheim collection. If that's your thing, there is a museum there of modern art. So if you are interested in that, you can do that, too. That's it for me. As always, be good, be kind, and be careful, because I have got to go to the Far East 